I decided to get into professional wrestling because I've always loved it. Uh, my earliest memory of professional wrestling was me watching it with my grandmother. Um, just that it's the, the pomp, the circumstance, the explosions, the, the, the larger than life characters. It's, it's always been something that kind of resonated with me a little bit, I think, because uh, when I was younger, I was kind of a, a quieter kid. So it, it definitely, I feel like it brought something out of me. My name is Ian Brown. Uh, in ring, I go as Ian Maxwell. I started wrestling, or started training, excuse me, uh, two years ago, uh, December of 2014. In ring right now, uh, I am a champion. Uh, yes, I would be considered a high flyer. Uh, a lot of jumping, a lot of running. Um, a lot of my, my moveset is more towards uh, body manipulation and, and speed. When I was 11, I started watching wrestling. Uh, it was WrestleMania 28, to be exact. And the first match was Daniel Bryan versus Sheamus, and AJ Lee came out with Daniel Bryan. And just from there, I knew that this is like my love. My name is Kristen Brakovic, but when it comes to wrestling, I'm known as Alpha Tiefler. I do ring announcing, and I am currently training. I've been training for about seven, seven, eight months now. I go two, three times a week to training in George South. He does training on Tuesdays, so he has us just do things like you know tackles and drops, and drop downs, and things like that, just to like the basics. He teaches us old school wrestling. And on Wednesdays, Caleb Conley he does more like advanced things, and he does a lot of blow up drills. It's really like harsh, but it's a lot of fun. As I grew up, I grew up in a, a, the, the housing projects. Uh, not enough money, you know, not enough money to go around to go to you know different places like the circus or anything. I just turned on the television one day and and I saw professional wrestling for the first time when I was about eight years old. And when I watched it, uh, from that point on, I knew that's what I wanted to do. My name is Dion Johnson. Uh, I'm going into my 26th year of professional wrestling this year. I'm a uh, Old school throwback of the Junkyard Dog, Dusty Rhodes, Jimmy Valiant, all those three guys combined into one. My name is Rayhan Winston. Uh, my ring name is Montana Black. I've been wrestling for almost two years now. Uh, current status is injured or hurt at the moment. My name is Austin Steele. Well, I've been retired for the past uh, 20 years. Um, Recently, I've got back into the wrestling business, which I've missed totally. I am the locker room manager and commissioner of the NAWA, North American Wrestling Alliance. I've been in sports uh, my entire life. I've always had a very short attention span as, as far as uh, most sports were concerned. I went from karate to running track to playing basketball back to running track. My fitness level has definitely increased. I started working out a lot more than I did before. You know, I can run longer on a treadmill before I get winded. It just, everything has just like maybe pushed myself harder because this is something I want. This is the only thing I've really ever wanted. So I'm gonna push myself to the max. Entertainment is what I've always wanted to do. So just getting to like, either getting booed by a fan or cheered, it's, it's all I want. Like just to make other people happy or make them go home with an experience of, wow, that was great. Actually, I uh, was playing high school football uh, in my ninth grade year. Uh, 
there was a girl, but her father was a uh, professional wrestler, and he owned a gym in my hometown. And uh, I would work out there during the summer, getting ready for uh, amateur wrestling and football for the upcoming season. And I just happened to bump into him, per se, and uh, I started going to training uh, seminars with him. And uh, I just got in the ring, and it came natural to me, and I've been doing it ever since. I uh, graduated in 1994 from Union High School. I uh, went to play football at North Greenville College. I played college there, football there for four years. And all the while, I was moonlighting professional wrestling under a mask. Because, you know, the NCAA, you cannot receive any monies while you're in college, but I was moonlighting, so the statute of limitations is over, so it can't get me. Always wanted to be into wrestling, didn't know the first thing about how to get into it. I eventually stopped making excuses and just got on Google, started searching um, wrestling schools. There was a, um, uh, a moment where I wanted to believe that a miracle was going to happen, and me and my roommate at the time hopped in a car and drove down to the WWE Performance Center when it opened, hoping that we would run into somebody who could either say, oh, hey, these guys look good. Let's see if they want to be wrestlers or if at least they could point us in the right direction on how to get trained to be a wrestler. Uh, bad decision was that it was during Christmas weekend, so nobody showed up. We sat in the parking lot for like four hours. Nobody walked in or out. But um, eventually uh, we actually reached out to uh, Jay Lethal, my roommate messaged Jay Lethal and didn't think he was going to get a response. And I um, asked him, hey, do you know any schools around Charlotte? And the first school that he recommended was High Spots. Okay. I kind of was a jack of all trades. Um, I was one of those guys who was like, I didn't really want to go to college. I just didn't see the point in building up a whole bunch of debt. And um, decided that uh, prior to wrestling, um, my career choice was just, I was gonna do whatever could make me money. So the original goal that everybody thought was for me was gonna be music. And um, that's what my family does. And I didn't, I love music. I'm always gonna be a lover of music, but I didn't want that to be my legacy was music like all the rest of my family. Like they're excellent at music. I'm not as good at it as they are at it. They all excel. And I didn't wanna tarnish what they've kind of done and so I said, I need to find something that I'm really good at. So that's where everybody thought I was going to be. It was in the music business. And then I just decided I got to go find what's going to make me happy. And so that's what I started putting my hands to different things until I was able to figure out how to get into wrestling. Professional wrestling is not my full time job. I, I do work every weekend. Um, got to make that money. I wrestle every weekend. Um... Sometimes uh, it's a three-day weekend, sometimes it's a two-day weekend. It just all depends on uh, what the booking situation looks like for that month. This is their learning. This is where they learn. And this is where they get the exposure. And uh, hopefully, and I pray that I'd like to see every one of them make it. But, uh, you know, you'll see the ones that, that will eventually. As long as, like I said, take care of themselves, take care of the bodies and use that mind. Listen up, please, if you don't mind. Uh, uh, Jason, anything before we get ready to start? Yeah. Yes. We got five matches in the uh, big bunkhouse. The matches will be posted in just a second. Uh, if you know your first or second, we got your finishes and you're ready to go. Uh, we got a pretty good little crowd here, a lot of kids, so let's go have some fun, and George is going to lead us when we get started. Uh, and you're going to do the 10 bell? Yes, we're going to go out. Uh, we're going to do the national anthem. We're going to introduce Danny Elston Seals, our new commissioner, and then uh, he's going to have us all go out uh, we're going to do a 10 bell salute for all the fallen, uh, Ivan, George Steele, uh, a few of the others. So, <coughs> so George will lead us yeah, and we'll we get started. Guys, let's pray real quick. Father, I just come to you, Lord, right now to thank you so much for my life, to thank you for the years that you have been so good to me. And Lord, I thank you for mercy and grace for all the times that I have failed you. And Lord, tonight we come, Lord, to thank you so much for uh, this good house that you've given us. Thank you for Jason. I thank you for his hard work. I, Lord, and for all of the help that he's had. Lord, I ask that you watch over everybody in this room, that you'd keep us safe and protect us. Uh, there's a lot of friendships. Lord, there's a lot of miles in this room. And I just ask that you would watch over us and keep us safe. Lord, I do pray, especially right now for Ivan and uh, Lord, for what he meant to a lot of us. I pray that you'd continue to bless his family. 
And Lord, we thank you so much that uh, you have allowed us to do something that we've loved for a long time. So Lord, may you use us. May everything that's done here just bring honor and praise to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Give thanks. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Junkies, y'all ready? Thank you. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Yep. Well, I've, I've traveled as far as uh, Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, I just came back from Dallas, Texas uh, two weeks ago. I flew out there for a one-night shot and flew back in the next day, which was horrible. But, hey... Whatever calls, you know, I'm there. Uh, I started with the uh, Fantasy Professional Wrestling Federation back in 1990. And I went to the Professional Wrestling Federation based out of Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, in 91. Uh, from there, I went to do TV shows for uh, World Championship Wrestling, WCW. And uh, at the time, it was the World Wrestling Federation, now it's WWE. So uh, I got a lot of TV exposure, I got to meet a lot of fantastic people, I got to travel, and it was a real blessing. I think the one thing that, that held on to me that, that I think I, I mentioned kind of briefly earlier was the flamboyance. Um, the, the flamboyance of professional wrestling, it is really, like I said, being a quieter kid, it just kind of helped me. It, it, it drew me because uh, there, there's a... Uh, a certain je ne sais quoi. Uh, I, I really couldn't even answer it. That's, it's hard to answer, honestly, to uh, say what it was that drew me. But I, I think it might be the flamboyance, could be the athleticism. God, I, I really don't know. As far as the entertainment side is concerned, that's probably the best part. Um, I mean, yeah, the athleticism is all well and good, but going out there and actually interacting with the fans, um, going out there and and having a personal connection with them because whether they like you or they hate you they're going to tell you what they think about you and sometimes it's nice other times not so much but it, it's it definitely has to be the best part i can't say that i'm i'm more an athlete or an entertainer because sometimes i find myself slipping out of the entertainment part and being more more of the athlete Sometimes I find myself being really cheesy and realizing, hey, let's have fun out here tonight. <laughs> so it, it really kind of depends on what kind of mood I'm in, I guess. What, what uh, attracts me to it now, uh, to the business, is the performance part of it. The athletic part of it was when I was younger that I could, you know, do a lot of things. But now I don't, everybody asks me, well, they say you're a wrestler. I said, no, I'm not a wrestler anymore. I am a worker. I work the people that pay their money coming to be entertained so that's what i am i am a worker not a wrestler my family they're all kind of mixed my mother was like okay i support you i told her when i was 12 she was like okay and then at 15 i decided to start looking up schools and she was totally all for it and then when i found high spots she was like okay let's go well i'm the youngest of four children so parents can be a little protective at times and um Granted, I'm a little bit older when I started, but my mom was kind of like, uh, I don't know. Like, if this is really what you would want to do, then I'll, by all means give it a try. But she was like, I don't think I can come to the show because somebody hurt you. I'm not sure how I can handle it. And I was like, okay. But they have come to a couple of shows and seen me wrestle and they love it every single time they come out there. They have so much fun and they've been so supportive. Uh, they've bought and a uh, t-shirt from me, uh, me and the tag team that I am, we have shirts that we've ordered and made and they bought t-shirts, which I would have just gave them to them because they're family, but they're like, no, I want to support you, so I'm buying a shirt. So they've been very supportive. My dad, uh, he's my dad, so of course he's going to be very protective over his little girl. Um, he doesn't want to see me hurt, so he's gonna. he always says, oh, you're not going to be able to do this, that, or the other. He believes in me. He really does. It's just he does not want to see me hurt. So I feel like the people I train with are definitely my family now. And my old friends, like the ones, they're just all like, oh my god, wow, that's, that's amazing. They just always want to know more. They want to see more. And I just think it's quite cool. And then like teachers at school, like all of them are finding out through each other. And they're just always asking me, and they just everyone just wants to know, like, um, like you're 16, wow, like, so it's quite amazing. To me, when I do these weekends, it's an escape from the work week. 
It's an escape from the wife. It's an escape from the kids. I'm, I get to be somebody else. I don't have to be daddy. I don't have to be husband. I can be me. So this is, when you, when you, when you see me on the weekends in a wrestling ring or at a wrestling show, you really get to see the real Deion Johnson. Being here, I get to meet so many different people. I've met Cody Rhodes, and he I have to say he's the most memorable. I, met, I worked his table two days in a row at one show, and then a few months later, a completely different show, I see him, and I yell, I love you, Cody, and he turns around, he's like, he just talks to me like, like he was like, oh, hey, thanks again for the help, and I, I never said, hey, remember me, and I just I felt really like, oh my god. He was somebody I looked up to who's one of my first favorite male wrestlers. Before I actually got into professional wrestling or started training, um, I went to an in, in independent promotion, um, uh, PWX, and the very, not, not the first person I saw, but the first person that really jumped out to me was a guy by the name of Cedric Alexander. Um, and then later on going to high spots, I actually ended up realizing, oh, he trains here. This is gonna be amazing. <laughs> and um, so, so finally getting to, to meet him and jump in the ring with him and realizing, oh, he's just a normal dude like us. Uh, the most memorable experience I've had um, was taking a road trip with Cedric Alexander. He used to train with us. And uh, when I first met him, I knew he was in Ring of Honor, but I didn't think he would ever take the time to invite us out on trips uh, take us to shows with him, introduce us to promoters. Uh, but he took the guys that he knew wanted it and he got them booked on promotions that would have never heard of us. Some of the guys and girls are uh, completely opposite of their character. Where they're loud and boisterous in front of the camera, in front of the fans, they're quiet and very unassuming. The way I look at it, it's what they've always wanted to be but just felt like they couldn't be in actual life. I wrestled Lex Luger uh, in uh, the WWF at the time. And uh, it, was, it wasn't long afterwards, he had a spinal uh, stroke. They actually paralyzed him. And uh, fortunately, I was one of the later matches that he ever had. So I, got, I was fortunate to wrestle him. Um, Tatanka, that was in WWF. Um, we lost a dear friend the, the last night I wrestled him. It was uh, July 3rd, 1994, Ocean City, Maryland. And the referee that night, uh, Joey Morella, uh, he was the son of uh, the legendary Gorilla Monsoon. He uh, died in a car accident on the way home that night. And uh, he refereed my match so I was if not the last at least next to the last match he ever refereed so that particular one has stuck with me for since 1994. The main uh, aspect is that we are a family you know when we give our bodies to one another we're trusting our lives we're trusting our family's lives and everything that's involved in that because uh if we can't work, if they can't work, and if, it's like some of these guys, they may have a day job, but they may, this may be all they do. They go from town to town, night after night after night, and that's their food on the table. When someone gets hurt, especially uh, severely, it hurts. It hurts no matter what you may had had in, uh, in a personality conflict with that person just the day before, uh, it hurts. And it hits home real quick. I had to retire due to some injuries uh, sustained in the ring long term. Um, my main one was spinal injuries. Um, due to the many falls we take, uh, I have, according to my chiropractor, fractured my neck at least once. Uh, I have numerous discs that are uh, damaged, as well as a bad hip. My right hip needs to be replaced, and eventually that'll have to be done. I did a lot of crazy things in the ring, as they do now, and uh, I didn't take care of my body properly. 
as, as a high flyer, I am probably a little bit more prone to injury than most, uh, simply because the jumping, the, the impact is really hard on the knees as far as landings are concerned. Um, you do put yourself in a lot of bad situations, climbing up top, jumping off a top rope. Um, sometimes being a smaller guy, people will think, oh, let me throw him, or, or would you be okay with me doing this to you? Sometimes you have to take into consideration your own body and say, hey, no, I'm not okay with that because I might not make it out the other way. I uh, had an injury during training, uh, more like a re-aggravated injury that I didn't get taken care of properly. So I'm currently dealing with the consequences of that at the moment. Injuries are very prevalent uh, in this line of work. Some of them uh, you can kind of work through. And the injury that I've received or I have uh, took me out of work for a couple of months. The worst thing is the MCL sprain. It, it was move gone wrong but I mean, it still hurts once in a while, but it's, it's fine. I've gotten whiplash a few times. I've almost gotten a concussion quite a, quite a few times. It, in my first year of wrestling, I actually ended up having to uh, take about three, four months off because I accidentally kneed myself in the face doing something, uh, something that somebody post, proposed to me saying, hey, you know, it'd be really cool if we did this thing. And I was like, oh yeah, that'd be amazing. And the ceiling was really low. So I was like, okay. Um, once we got to the point where we were doing the move and I realized there was no way to navigate actually doing it, um, I thought, hey, it'd be okay to bring my knee towards my face while I was curled up in like a little ball. So <laughs> I need myself in the eye, had to have surgery and everything. So that was, that was a fun three, four months. Well, the injuries that I've had uh, over the years, I've had my nose broken, a uh, couple of fingers broken, a uh, broken ankle. Uh, I've had uh, knee problems, but I wouldn't per se uh, blame that on wrestling. I blame that on uh, high school and college football. So, yeah, but you're susceptible to all kinds of injuries in that ring. People, that they, they think that's a big trampoline out there. Well, it's not. I mean, it's plywood, steel, and just a little bit of cushion, and that's it. I mean. Yeah, your body, ha your body has to be able to sustain the abuse that you're going to take. Uh, the average fan, and I was included, said, oh, I could get in there. They could slam me, and I'll be fine. Uh, it's a lot different when you get in there and you you get slammed in that ring or you get thrown 10 feet in the air and you land. Uh, you can land wrong, just the wrong way, and you'll never wrestle again. Being female in this industry is quite hard and getting into it, I, I did know that it would be hard and especially being so young, uh, it, it's still hard you know sometimes I get a lot of jokes thrown my way whether it be age or being female but it's nothing I can't handle because at the end of the day I may be female but I could still kick some butt. I, I'm 16 everyone thinks I'm 18 or 19 and that's mostly when people get started like 18, 19 after college in their 20s uh, so you know it's kind of weird being 16 around all these 20 year olds and adults, but you know, I'm here to like prove that I'm serious. I may be 16, but I can do it just as well as you. People outside of like the people I know, they don't usually throw a joke my way until they get to know me. And then like once they've kind of like made acquaintances with me, then they can, they'll start throwing in jokes, but like, it's just like the people I know, the people I train with, they're my family, so yeah, they're gonna throw jokes by the way. Uh, jokes, sometimes they will get to me. It's being so young, it's kind of hard, but you know, I try to take it with just a smile. I'll try and throw a joke back, but if it does get to me, I'll, I try to let them know uh, and make them understand, but I do try to understand that they're just joking, they're my family, so yes. Anyone that wants to get into professional wrestling, uh, the one thing that I would say is, do you really want to get into professional wrestling? Um, simply because of the fact that it's, I've, there have been times where I've questioned whether I still want to do it. It's, it's hard on the body. Um, the, there are a lot of long nights. Um, putting up rings, taking them down, getting beat up for a little pay or no pay. 
<laughs> so so I, I would I would really question if they actually think they want to do it because it doesn't just it's not just oh I started training oh now I'm in WWE or oh I started training now I'm in Lucha Underground it, there's a lot of space in between when you start training and when you get to whatever your end game may be your career is going to be what you make it simple as that when you first get started people will tell you that you know I know the goal is WWE but only a handful of people make it there only a handful of people get looks. And I was told that from other schools that I had checked around at. Um, and then once I got into the business, I come to find out that that was not true. They're, they look at a lot of people. Um, and they say that it's about having what they need at the time they need it, which is, is very true. But if you make yourself something that everybody needs, how can they deny you? So your career is what you make it. Put time into it. Put effort into it, put energy into it, put thought into it. I would tell someone who wants to get into wrestling, just, just do it. Like, don't be scared if you think you're unfit or if you think you can't do it. Any, I think anyone can do it. It just takes time and effort and you have to put so much into it. But don't think you can't do it. Just find somewhere you can go, train and train. If you want to be a wrestler, be a wrestler. Like, don't just like drag your foot on it and be like, oh, I'm gonna be a wrestler and this is gonna be my gear and this is what I'm gonna wear. No, like really get out of there, like spend time. Like me and my buddies, we sit down and we like write out storylines for ourselves. We write out uh, gear concepts. We write out uh, move sets that we wanna try in the ring and things like that. We study other people's matches on a regular basis. And we're always thinking of what we can do to improve what we're already doing in the ring. Um, and it's it's starting to show people are starting to give us the recognition that we feel like we're working hard for so uh, that's the biggest piece of advice I can give well um, what I would tell a young inspiring pro wrestler now after 26 years stay out of it don't get in it but uh, no uh, I would uh, tell them to uh, just work as hard as they can uh, to get their name out and, and, and always listen and work with somebody that's better than, than they are. Because uh, you only get better by working or wrestling people that are better than you. So first of all, make sure this is the route you want to go. Because it's a lonely, um, self-serving uh, way of life. It's hard to have a family and do this. And learn your art. Because you, nobody can learn it for you. You can become whoever you want to be. You can be uh, the biggest bad guy or this, the prettiest, uh, what we call baby face. You could, you could be any of that on your own time. But your time should be spent learning the, the craft, learning the art of professional wrestling. Being in the WWE has always been the dream, but the dream has always also been to just be a professional wrestler and just to train. So I've gotten that. WWE is the goal. That is where I want to be. Um, if at any point in time I was to wrestle for New Japan, I would love to. Or um, even Ring of Honor would be nice to work for. Lucha Underground, definitely. I love the work that they're doing. Um, and then just to be able to travel and to say that wrestling is all I do for a living, like I don't have a full-time job, wrestling is my job because it's what I love to do so much. And so that is the ultimate goal is just to be able to say when I go to sleep at night, oh, I don't have to get up at six or seven to go get ready for a nine to five or a 10 to six or 11 to seven. I'm just getting up to live my life and then eventually go to a show and work, do what I love to do. So, so my end game is to really just be a wrestler. Um, WWE, uh, uh, a, uh, AAA, um, in any of the UK promotions, New Japan, I, 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 there isn't really a major end game. Uh, it's just to be supporting myself and enjoying what I'm doing still. UFC has really exploded. And so you're having crossovers now from wrestling to uh, MMA, mixed, mixed martial arts, and then back to wrestling again. If the fans are there and, and it's in their hearts, they love it, it's always going to be. 
to, to everyone out there who sees this, don't doubt me because I may be 16, but I have got some fire inside of me and it will burn every place down. It's, it's gonna always be in my blood. Uh, it's like a, an addiction, like, uh, like a drug addiction to me. I've got some inquiries about, you know, helping people come in and book talent and stuff like that. So that's why I see myself for the next five years, getting out of the ring and pretty much doing the backstage kind of stuff. And a lot of kids in my situation, or, or any kids in general, don't get to live their dream. And I got to live my dream for the past 26 years and it's been remarkable. As long as that's in, in that child's heart that's sitting at ringside and saying, I want to do that when I grow up. Wrestling will never die and the independence will always flourish somewhere.